I'm Costa from Car Focus, and today we're going to be looking at the EV6 from Kia. Now we do cover quite a lot in these walkthroughs, so feel free to look at the chapters in the comments below and skip ahead to the parts that you're interested in. If there's any other vehicles that you'd like us to review on Car Focus, please leave that in the comments below. The EV6 in Australia comes in four different model lineups. You get the Air rear wheel drive, you get the GT Line rear wheel drive, which is the one we've got here today. You get the GT Line all wheel drive and you get the GT all wheel drive. Now the main difference between the rear wheel drive and the all wheel drive is that the rear wheel drive gets a single motor on the rear wheels, whereas the all wheel drive gets dual motors. So it's got a, a motor on the rear wheels and another motor for the front wheels. Now the rear motor is the more powerful one. So even when you move on to the all wheel drive versions, the front motor is slightly smaller or a slightly lower kilowatt output. The first thing that jumps out for me with the EV6 is that it's Kia's very first all-electric vehicle from the ground up. We've already taken a look at the Nero and if you want to have a look at the video check it out here. The EV6 though is an all-electric vehicle. It was designed from day one to be an all-electric vehicle and you really start to understand why that's relevant as we start going through it today. Starting at the front styling, very unique styling. LED lights all the way through. All the lights on the, on the front of the vehicle are, are LED and the whole way that, that the vehicle comes together. They have gone with a fake front air intake here. I call it fake because it doesn't actually, this is not actually a front air intake, but they've still given it ridges to make it look like it's a bit of a grill um, and that it would ordinarily allow air to move through it, but it doesn't. I do like the way that these panels look like they're floating just off the top of this front splitter. You've got nice use of piano black all the way through and it complements especially the red car that we have here today. The new Kia logo understated on the front bonnet. Some of the more traditional things that you'd expect to find on the front of a vehicle, so the park sensors, tow hook covers, there's a front camera just there, part of the 360 degree view camera system. If you look at the styling, the car has got a pretty wide stance, very pronounced and a bit of a flare over the front wheels on both sides. It gives it a very aggressive kind of look and stance on the road. Even these styling lines here that split give it a bit of a v-shape and open it up left and right and they create like a more pronounced wheel arch on either side. So immediately when you first open the bonnet it looks kind of traditional because they've used this cover over here that looks like it's covering an engine but it's not it's actually a front trunk so once you open that up and look inside there there's actually a storage compartment because there is no front engine. It's got the traditional battery that's used just to, to run some of the startup functions of the vehicle, which wouldn't run off the main battery, the fuse box, and some of your fluid bottles. Yes, electric cars still utilize fluids. Looking at the front tires, you've got 20 inch continental tires on the front of the vehicle and the back. You've got these alloy rims that are finished in silver and black. And in keeping with traditional electric vehicle type rims, they're quite flat and, you know, aerodynamic. The car still uses calipers, although the EV6 is fitted with something that Kia calls an eye pedal. And what the eye pedal actually does is it allows you to drive the vehicle using just the accelerator and the regenerative brakes. So between regenerative braking and accelerating, it turns the car into a single pedal vehicle. Now it still has the brake pedal and the brake pedal will activate the traditional calipers, but really the calipers and the brake discs on this vehicle are essentially a braking backup system and they're only ever going to get used under extreme conditions. The front park sensor wraps around all the way to this front arch and this arch is also color coded all the way through. The bonnet of the vehicle sits just on top of this arch so really not a lot of space, not much, in fact no front fender at all. The bonnet wraps straight onto the arch and this little section here is the only real side front fender that you actually have. I do like the styling of the vehicle, I like the, the way that they've used these black A pillars into the rear view mirrors and into the B pillar and all the way around the glass here. So you really get this sense of this black section that wraps all the way around the vehicle like that. And the roof almost looks like it's kind of floating on top there in color. So you've got the red color floating on top there. Styling wise, really well done. Even this little indentation in the rear view mirror is very cool. You've also got your 360 degree view cameras underneath there. And you've got the indicator running all the way across the rear view mirror. Sticking with the styling, the car's currently locked, so when it's locked, it folds back the mirrors, but if we unlock it using the unlock button, the mirrors come out and the handles come out, so they just stick out just slightly like that, making it nice and easy for you to grab them and open the door. But you can also manually push those door handles back in, and if you need to, you can push them out like that, and then grab them and open. But they do stay in that position while, as long as the car's unlocked. As soon as you lock it, they fold in like that. And then once they fold it, and they can still manually come out, but obviously they won't open the door. You can see this black strip running through the bottom of the car that just ties in with this black effect 
that you get all the way through. And in fact, when I look at it with all the black and color, so it's really just black and color, all of a sudden the silver in the alloys doesn't make that much sense because it's not really repeated anywhere else on the vehicle. Still sticking with the styling, that same black finish funnels in through there and just flicks down onto the back of the, of the vehicle and continues on again onto the rear tail light. This is actually the tail light. So it carries on with the same color combination and flicks up to what looks like a small little rear spoiler. Small panels at the back here. So these fenders, just like the front ones, are really small and they molded to fit all the way up to the side of the vehicle like that. So very unique styling, really very different and creative and good on them for being brave. Looking at the rear styling of the vehicle, the rear spoiler has been split and it's got these two gaps running all the way through it with this tiny little connector right down the middle. So again, really exciting in the way that it's been styled and that kind of ties in with the dolphin fin aerial all symmetrically aligning really well. So this rear spoiler, what looked like a rear spoiler is actually also a high mounted stoplight and actually creates light all the way from the tail lights across the whole rear of the vehicle. The new brushed aluminium Kia logo sitting just there and the EV6 badge on this side and our GT line badge on that side. The lights are rimmed in. So this light runs all the way across there all the way down the side of the rear lights. And then they've done this little dark metallic -y bronze finish that runs all the way through there. And then back to piano black, the rear sensors, rear tow hooks, reflectors, 360 degree view camera. And that looks like the rear fog light. Electric boot release and power tailgate. Inside the cabin, now this is where all that fancy rear styling is starting to cramp the style here a little bit because it's kind of coming in and squeezing the rear boot in just a little bit, but it is still very big and very deep, so you're not losing a lot of space. This is your charging bag, and underneath here you've got all your different chargers and charging cables and wires all stowed away in this very clever little compartment just there. You've got luggage hooks running all the way through the rear of the cabin with little storage compartments as well as these release handles that allow you to drop the rear seats and create a flat loading area. You've got your retractable parcel shelf, which comes in and hooks just there. And it can also be completely removed if you don't need it. And then you can use these to just drop those seats and create a completely flat loading area for larger items. So the vehicle is fitted with a lithium ion battery with 77.4 kilowatt hours. It charges through the driver's side rear tail light as seen here in the shot. Charging ports, it's got AC and DC charging points. On AC, it estimated charge time is seven hours and 20 minutes. It says that if you're on a DC fast charger, a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger, 73 minutes. And if you can find a 350 kilowatt DC charger, you should be able to charge the whole car in 18 minutes. These charging flaps can be a little bit tricky and annoying if you don't know how to use them. And it took me a while to figure this one out, so I'll share it with you. To open and close it, you press this button. And before I do, I'll actually show you that on the back side of the flap, there's this little protrusion just there. And that's actually designed to press that button when the flap is closed, I'll show you now. So if you press that button, it closes. And if you remember sort of where it was and press in the same general direction, it hits that button again and opens the flap. You've also got a manual open and close release on the inside of the car. And the other thing that I have noticed is that if you forget it open, climb in, start the car, it'll automatically close the flap for you. Okay, so in the back seat of the vehicle, the first thing that jumps out at me is how big these rear seats are. They're really long. You've also got an all black roof liner, so it does make the interior of the cabin of the car quite dark. The finish though of the material is really good. You get this kind of velvety finish on the rear seats, well designed and ribbed and, and perforated. So it looks really cool and stylish. And it's also got this brave white finish all the way around the seats and through the interior of the cabin of the car. I say brave because it's not necessarily for everybody, uh, but I feel that it does work on the inside of the EV6. Nice big armrest with two cup holders. So pretty standard. All the safety features you'd expect, the ISOFIX points, the three-point seat belts, all of those. It does also get USB-C charge points, one on either side, similar to what we saw in the Nero. And the same design of, of the seats from the Nero as well. So they taper up here into what looks like a bit of a grab handle. It's also got this, this grab handle just there, which allows you to recline the seats. You also get vehicle to load. So you've got a 240 volt power plug that sits just here which allows you to charge any kind of appliance that you would want to charge. Vehicle to load can also be used out of the rear of the vehicle to charge an electric 
push bike or anything like that or any kind of electrical device that you want to charge. Because it's an electric vehicle, it means that the manufacturers can get really creative with the space inside here. And what they've done today with the EV6 is they've created this whole open area at the top and this center console just floats across the top here and has another massive storage compartment down there with an endless amount of charging points, 12 volt power points, USB A's, USB C's, all sorts of charging functionality running all the way through there. The same quality finish of the material, nice big flat foot wells all the way through there because there's just no, no components and stuff that need to be accommodated for. And you've got this nice swooping dash with the, the well lit glove box over there. The, the finish of the material on the dash and on the center armrest is really something unique, not something that you see every day, very soft touch. And they've gone for this textured finish along with a jewel tone, a light and dark gray finish. So through the console and through the armrest, ties up really neatly. Almost looks like these lines carry on onto that dash there. Eight-way electric seats for front driver and passenger. Controlled on the side here with tilt function and with lumbar support. You've got Meridian surround sound system in the doors. You can see the unique speakers and you've got again the same door handle that we saw earlier in the Nero and the same black, white and silver finishes running through. Looking at the driver's control panel, You've got all the traditional buttons, electric windows, one touch for driver and front passenger, your central locking, your electric mirrors and your electric folding mirrors. You've also got your door handle which flicks nicely into there and you've got your memory seats position one and position two situated just there. Over here you've got your height adjustable headlights, you've got your power tailgate, your electric fuel flap release, your park brake which sits in and your ESP active and deactivation. Starting with the steering wheel, it has the two spoke steering wheel which is very unusual sort of 70s 80s retro i guess heated steering wheel on this side you've got your controls for radio volume phone as well as your user selectable button which is the star button where the driver can select their own function that they wanted to serve on this side you've got your cruise control and your lane departure warning systems all situated in there you've also got your drive mode button just there underneath the the steering wheel or hooter on either side you've got these paddle shifters and the paddle shifters on the ev6 because it's a, it's a single speed gearbox it's they're not there to change gears they're actually there to adjust your regenerative braking so on the left hand side you've got the plus and on the right hand side you've got the minus and that's just to adjust the level of regenerative braking if you put it to the max it will basically just brake the car instantly all the time all right so on startup you can see here this is all our driver aids here it gives us a picture of the road that we're on as well as what's going on around us. In the bottom left-hand corner, the little green ready light is on, telling us that the car is actually switched on because of course it's electric, so there's no engine noise to let us know that it's on. We've got the battery at 38%, the battery meter and, and the battery charge levels as well at level one. Seat belt warnings and all the other bits and pieces. In the top right here, we've got our range, so 169 kilometers before we need to recharge. And then all our normal, our cruise control um, settings at the top following distances, lights, uh, lane departure warning, speed sign recognition, as well as our gear position lever, which is currently in P4 Park. Moving to the center touch display, we've got our, our temperature, we've got our radio media, we've got our battery charge, and we've got our range. And sort of superimposed in the background is our sat nav, which is kind of indicating where we are. We've also got the time settings just at the top there. So if we click in here, we go into the main menu and all the different navigation buttons. And if we scroll across, you get a few more, as well as the owner's manual, which is really handy because it sits there and it also tells you to scan a QR code if you want to access it on your mobile phone. Now these buttons can be moved around. So if you uh, long press them and hold them, it then brings you into this menu. And then from here, you can actually shift these buttons around and you can move them to whatever position you like. And if we click the hamburger button, we can go display off which blacks out that center screen, really handy for long distance night driving. In the center console, you've got the buttons for your air conditioned and heated seats, driver and front passenger, as well as your heated steering wheel. Just a little bit further back, your start button sits there. That takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not in any of the traditional places you'd expect it to be to the left or right of the steering wheel, but instead it's sitting in that center console. Over here you have what I want to call a gear shifter, but it's obviously not a gear shifter because the car doesn't have any gears. Uh, this is probably just your drive controller, I guess, uh, which lets you navigate from drive, neutral, reverse, and park 
rotating. Moving back behind there, you've got your auto hold button, your park sensors, and your 360 degree view cameras just there. Because they've gone with this floating center console, there is nowhere to wirelessly charge your cell phone in the front there. So they've incorporated the wireless cell phone charging spot just there. And it might look a little bit big, but it actually slips in behind there and fits a modern smartphone. You got your, car, your cup holders, one there and one there. This one has got these little spring-loaded sections to keep a cup in place. And you've also got this removable little section here, um, which can turn that storage space into, uh, into something a little bit bigger and more versatile. And your center armrest with a storage compartment, which is pretty big and pretty deep. Any other car that you'd like us to cover, please leave it in the comments below. If there's any suggestions, leave those in the comments below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.